Welcome to SVG TV News for Monday, July 27th, 2015. I am Jennifer Richardson with the details. Leader of the Opposition New Democratic Party, Honorable Annie Eustace, says he's not in support of the no registration period in constituencies from August 3rd to September 4th, 2015. A release issued by the Electoral Office last Friday states that during the month of August, the office will focus on the preparation and publication of the voters' list. And from the period August 3rd to September 4th, when there will be no registration in constituencies, the office will provide emergency services to the public, including the distribution of national identification cards. On Ready Today, the opposition leader says this poses a serious challenge to many living in constituencies and could not deter per and could sorry deter persons from registering. And I told her in no certain terms she will not be having our support in relation to that matter. Okay, I'm glad to hear that. You cannot prevent people from registering. If the election is called while you are on holiday in the registration. It means what? That we're going to go back to the old voters list for the elections? And all these are the issues that arise, you know. You're quite correct. We don't know when the election will be called. Let us say it is called any time in that period that you want to register in the office. What are you going to go back to the old list? With the hundred and something names? What what will what, what they do? There are a lot of issues involved here. Mm -hmm. I know some people if you do the list now, we'll be concerned because they might have re-registered or done over their registration. They may not still make the list that is being prepared now. Yes. But they have time later to do that too because yes. you won't just do one list. According to the opposition leader, to close the electoral office during this election season for one month is a disservice to the nation and to the electoral process. I raise the question of, with, in the meeting with the supervisory election as to whether her office, because the list of persons who are down to be taken off, plus having to do normal registration, whether her office had all the resources that could do that. And she kept saying yes. This morning she's saying yes. And I asked her again, if you can do it, why then you stop in the registration in the constituencies? If you have the resources, why? If I do not agree that we should stop registration at all until such time as the election is called and you have a late registration period. According to the Electoral Office, today, Monday, July 27th, conclude the 30-day period provided in the Representation of the People Amendment Act 2015 for voters to update their voter registration and so avoid being excluded from the next voters list to be published. The office says the Supervisor of Elections has also advised the registering officers that registration should be done on Wednesday, July 29th to cater for any persons who could not have been accommodated today. The government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines is said to have entered into a contract with Aegis R of France on July 13, 2015 for the design and supervision of bridge replacement and flood mitigation works in Kingstown, Green Hill, Daphne, Fenton and Arnest Vale. The contract worth some EC $1.96 million is funded by the World Bank under the Regional Disaster Vulnerability Reduction Project, the RDVRP. The proposed works are part of government's priority investments to reduce the country's physical and economic vulnerability to adverse natural events through building resilience to current and future climatic changes. A media release points out that the consultants will, over a 12-month period in the first phase, prepare designs of bridges and fords at South River, North River, Green Hill, Daphne and Fenton, and river embankment and flood protection at the North and South Rivers in Kingstown, and the Warra, Warra River in Honest Vale. It states that the designs are expected to ensure that vital transportation and other physical infrastructure are protected in times of excessive rain events. In the second phase, the consultants will, over the 12-month period, support the supervision of the construction of the bridges, fords, and river embankment protection. The EC $165.4 million RDVRP is said to be supporting SVG's efforts 
to prevent and adapt to the effects of climate change, strengthen hazard and risk evaluation, and improve decision-making. U.S. Embassy Narcotics Affairs Representative Robert McDonnell is urging the 2015 Regional Security System graduates to take a unified approach to combating crime. McDonnell was addressing the 33 officers who graduated from the Regional Security System Training Institute Basic Course 1 on Friday, July 24th at the Old Montrose Police Training School. The course is funded by the U.S. government through its Barbados based under the Caribbean Basic Security in Initiative, the CBSI, at a tune of $107,000. We believe that only through a uni unified regional response can we begin to hope to combat the nefariously powerful and relentless crime syndicates. I want to congratulate you graduates on your hard work, diligence, seriousness of purpose, active participation and endurance in this training. We understand the importance of training at all levels and for officers such as yourselves to be ably prepared for the roles which you have undertaken in service to your country and the Eastern Caribbean. I know you have learned a lot during this course and will take it a step further by sharing your newfound and hard-won knowledge with your colleagues back home. Given the executive director's remarks was Sergeant George Charles, who noted that human trafficking and illicit arms continue to be a concern for regional security. Sergeant Charles, who spoke on behalf of Bertie Hines, the executive director acting, also encouraged the graduates to be resourceful and utilize their skills wisely. A great investment has been made in you. Indeed, there are great expectations of you and what you should achieve. RSS and the people of this sub-region are expecting fair returns on these investments. And in the pursuit of your renewed commitment, be ethical, positive, and resourceful. Be mindful of and assume that detractors and those who craftily try perennially to compromise our sovereignty, our sovereignty. You are the gatekeepers. Officers from St. Kitts, Antigua, Dominica, Grenada, Barbados, as well as this country were trained in areas such as basic military procedures and equipped with skills to operate in other paramilitary units, amongst other things. The course, which ran in two phases, began in Barbados from May 4th to the 3rd July and from July 4th to the 24th here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Dane Wilson, a national of St. Lucia, has been slapped with three separate charges for breaching the immigration laws here. Wilson is accused of entering this country on July 21st, 2015 at Chateaubelair, being a prohibited immigrant entered the state by boat without a passport. He was fined $500 to be paid forthwith for this charge or three months imprisonment. The second charge of entering the state by boat and disembarking without the consent of an immigration officer, he was sentenced to a six months jail term. He was also charged for knowingly and willfully allowing himself to be landed as a prohibited immigrant. For this charge, a fine of $2,000 was ordered to be paid forthwith or faced nine months in prison. He was also ordered to be deported from St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Reports are that on July 21, 2015, Wilson was involved in a fracas with a resident of Rose Hall. The matter was reported to the Chateaubelair police, who, on investigating the matter, found out that Wilson had entered the state illegally. He was immediately arrested and handed over to the relevant authorities. When Wilson appeared at the Serious Offenses Court on Friday, July 24th, he pleaded guilty to all charges. The General Employees Cooperative Credit Union, GECO Limited, today handed over a total of 12 scholarships to students who were successful in the 2015 CPEA examinations. The award ceremony, which was held at the Methodist Church Hall, is said to have been the 34th such initiative by GECO, designed to reward students' academic performance. Chairperson of the Financial Institution Scholarship Committee, Dr. Meneva Glasgow, says the 12 students who today received the awards joined 231 other Vincentians 
who have benefited from the scholarships since the program began in 1981. You have your parents and the teachers to thank for bringing you to this point. In large measure, your achievement has been possible because of their dedication and sacrifices. So even as you celebrate, never forget what they have done for you. Gekko's scholarships are highly prestigious and the much coveted awards. This year, we have increased from $1,400 to $1,600 for students in first to third forms, and from $1,600 to $1,800 for students from the fourth form to the community college levels. GECO is committed in assisting you to achieve the best education at any of our secondary schools in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Dr. Glasgow says the 12 students recognized have attained average ratings of 70 to 100 percent. In keeping with our promise from last year, GECO has increased the scholarships from 11 to 12. It is the first time that GECO is awarding a singular scholarship to a student from the Southern Grenadines. In the past, one scholarship was awarded for the whole Grenadines. The board took the decision to change that, and I am pleased that Zoe has performed well, thus justifying the decision. I encourage the students from the Grenadines to continue to excel in a pursuit for higher education. I entreat all our scholarship recipients to continue to build on the foundation that GECU has laid for you. Think of your future, concentrate on your studies, and work hard so that you can reap rich dividends in your academic endeavors. President of GECU, Kelvin Pompey, says the institution has spent millions of dollars over the 34 years that it has been rewarding students' excellence at the common entrance and now at the CPEA level. To date, 231 scholarships have been offered at a total value of $2,610,300. On average, therefore, over the period 1981 to 2015, GECU has been awarding approximately seven scholarships per year at a value for each cohort of $11,600. GECU has also been increasing the number of scholarships, as you heard, offered over the years. This year, 2015, 12 scholarships will be awarded, and of these, two would be given to our Grenadine students. One going to a Northern Grenadine, and the other to a Southern Grenadine student. First place performer in the 2015 CPEA, Paige Cadogan, spoke on behalf of the 11 scholarship recipients and says they are proud to join the ranks of the other students who have aimed for excellence. On behalf of the Gecko Scholars of 2015, I thank Gecko for recognizing the hard work that we have put in over our years at primary school, which has been reflected in our CPA results. I can promise you that we will all continue to work hard and do our best to meet the GECU established requirements. With God's grace and our prayers to him, we know that he will help us scholars to excel in our secondary environment. We aim to make GECU proud. Thank you GECU for the financial donations which surely will assist us all in our studies and which I am sure our parents really appreciate. As a junior saver at GECU, I know that GECU has always been interested in the development of young people and I know too that this scholarship is one of the many ways to show this interest. Youths on the move for Christ, there is hope, there is Jesus. That's the theme under which the youths of the New Testament Church of God held a march and rally on Saturday, 25th July. Following their march to the streets of Kingstown, the youngsters congregated at Heritage Square where they praised and worshipped. Bishop Wendell Davis told the gathering that while the society is facing many challenges, young people must be reminded 
that they should keep their faith and hope strong in God. Because that's the message, that's the only message that we have to give to this world, that in Jesus Christ, there is hope. Because right. I've grown to understand that when a person lose hope, then you have lost everything. When you give up on hope, then it's, you might as well give up on everything else. And you're here this evening to demonstrate that to let other young people know, let, let the country know, let the world know that in Jesus Christ there is hope. And so I want to welcome you here this evening. I want to uh, encourage you to, to, to understand exactly what you're about. To do what you're doing for the glory and the honor of Almighty God. Because the only one that can help us is not so much the government, it's not so much all those people in authority. The only one that can help us is Jesus Christ, it's God himself. Bishop Easton Thompson from Jamaica says the Caribbean is under attack by the United States, which he says is pushing their same-sex marriage agenda on the region. Under attack from external forces, try to force certain behavior pattern on the Caribbean for us to accept men living with men and women living with women. But let me say this, Jamaica will not accept it. And St. Vincent will not accept it. We believe that a man must marry to a woman. Do you hear me, church? I want to talk to you this afternoon. Bishop Thompson articulated that Caribbean preachers must never be afraid to speak up against misconduct and that no amount of money or influence should make preachers become silent on such subject matters. Because let a preacher say to preach because they want to go back to America, like America is heaven. Yeah. Yeah. They can't preach it like me. Yeah. The earth is the law, is the fullness, and they are going to be in. But let me say this, ladies and gentlemen. Let me say this today, and I want you to understand this. That if God, Jehovah God, and mark my word, quote me on that. If God doesn't destroy and punish America, God will have to wake up Sodom and Gomorrah and beg their pardon. The same God that destroys Sodom and Gomorrah when man having sex with man is the same God today. Can I talk to the church in the house? Can I talk to the church in the house? I don't care how many money people have and people try to pass it in parliament. We are standing up for righteousness. We are standing for holding matrimony. Then shall a man leave his mother and father and shall cleave to his wife. The Honestville Covenant Assembly is hosting its first annual evangelistic week of services. The week of services started yesterday and will run until August 2nd at 7 p.m. nightly. Host Pastor Dr. Walford Thompson says the objective of the week of services is, is to expose persons to the gospel. Well, we're seeking to uh, impact them for Christ, letting them know that Jesus Christ is the answer to all of their needs, all of their problems, and that when they commit their lives to Christ, they have someone who is willing, come, who comes alongside to help them, to aid them, to walk with them, to enable them to live life as it was intended for them to live that life. And last night, Bishop uh, Seal challenged us with the whole idea of discipleship. That to be a Christian is not just to raise your hand uh, or sign a paper or come to the altar and have a word of prayer, but it's to be a follower of Jesus Christ, to commit your life completely to him and to seek to walk with him in obedience to his word. My preferred uh, manner of preaching is to expound the scriptures. Uh, it's become quite uh, popular now to do topical sermons. Pick a topic and then find a text. I prefer to uh, just take a text and expound it. And so it's what we call expository preaching. And I want to share the word of God with, with each person who comes in. And my request of God every day is, God, what do you want to do 
in the service this evening. And be open to him on what he wants to do in, in expounding his word, that people's lives can be transformed. Spiritual Baptists, Sorrels and Vincent and the Grenadines will gather at Victoria Park on Sunday, the 2nd August, from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. for a day of worship and rejoicing. Members of the faith will commemorate both the significance of the August 1st Emancipation Day holiday, as well as their 50th anniversary of liberation from the colonial law, which criminalized their worship in 1912. That law was repealed by the E.T. Joshua government in 1965. Earlier this year, on the 24th of May, the Baptists held a march in Kingstown and a service at Victoria Park in celebration of National Spiritual Baptist Freedom to Worship Day. However, a media release stated that there will be no procession on the 2nd of August. They will go directly to Victoria Park at 9 a.m. for divine worship until 1 p.m. Following a lunch break from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m., a rejoicing service will be held from 2 p.m. Sorry, to 6 p.m. The Prime Minister, the leader of... Baptist celebrates the opposition and the Minister of Ecclesiastical Affairs have been invited to, to deliver brief addresses during the afternoon session at the event.